Welcome back to the show. The Harris camp reveals the crypto stance and so much more. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. Right now, we're looking at $2.22 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is off by 0.7%. $60,300-plus for Bitcoin, $2,500-plus for Ethereum, $118 billion-plus market cap for Tether, USDC, $34 billion-plus at number six. And we see number seven spot is XRP at $0.57, cents, off by one2 in the 24, off by 4.5 on the seven-day. The range of price very quickly between 56 and 58 cents. We're sitting smack dab in the middle. I know the price has been dropping over the last few days, but you know, this is one of those moments where technical analysts believe this could be your last opportunity to buy at these prices, not financial advice. Before we get started, I want to remind people because this has been so well received. I cannot tell you how many people have sent me messages saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's because of this. I get calls every day of people saying, listen, I've taken two or three shots. I feel sick all over. I've had COVID. We now know that the spike protein is in the body for a very long time. There has to be detoxification. So far, the only available supplement that has a detoxifying capability with respect to dissolution of the spike protein is a Japanese product called natokinase. Natokinase, an endogenous oral thrombolytic uh, uh, basically proteolytic enzyme. And that is what they've done with that and a few other elements to put inside the spike support formula, which I have set up so you can get with a discount by clicking the link underneath the video right now and get this for yourself. If you've taken a shot and worried about any kind of side effects or detoxing from your body, this, as according to Dr. McCullough, can help you do it. And I've already done a round of this and I'm getting ready to start my second round. Because this, is, to me, is a big deal. I took one of the shots, and I do have some side effects, but I'm hoping to remedy those very soon, and I'm going to do that. Now, what else you can do, and every family should have this, is a medical emergency kit. And everything you buy here is under a discount. You get 10% off of anything that you buy just using my link. And everyone should have this for their family, whether it's in a car, in the home, Everyone should have this. So, you know, and people are ordering like this for two or three people in their family, you know, like their children to have a family as well and these things. And you get the discount no matter what you buy. So make sure you do that and check that out underneath the link because we know what happens. We know what happens when you have an administration like this one who has used weaponization of multiple things to control citizens. It's despicable. But let's get into this. The Harris and Tim Walls 2024 campaign has just rolled out their crypto plan. Uh Uh-oh. It also includes making Gary Gensler the next U.S. Treasurer as well. Just in, the SEC issues Wells' notice to NFT platform OpenSea threatening to sue, citing NFTs on the platform are securities. Now, uh, I have been asked over the years to pump and dump tokens. And you guys know I sell products, but I never sell anything that I don't use. Period. Full stop. I'm always very clear about what I sell. But there are some out here who will tell you they'll pump this token, they'll pump that token, they'll pump this NFT project and this NFT project. Well, and I said, I won't do that because of the fear that the SEC would come sue and then come get anyone who promoted it. And this is why you hear me talk about Ripple and XRP and Bitcoin ETFs, because they're clear, right? I know, I know. I say it to people all the time. How come you don't talk about Flare? Because DeFi is going to get sued too. Look at what they're doing. I don't want that to happen. I didn't want this to happen to OpenSea. I didn't want this to happen to Ripple and the list goes on and on. But this is what Gary Gensler's SEC is doing until we get legislation. And this is what the Harris campaign is pushing. Now, a lot of people are confused because we've heard the the, uh, 
town halls with Mark Cuban and they're saying, wait, 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 wait. The Harris camp is going to be bullish on crypto, but they just issued a Wells notice to OpenSea over NFTs. Now people are confused, but I thought the Harris camp was going to be supporting crypto. Well, they're all liars, so vote them out. Perry Ann Boring from the Digital Chamber comes in. Most NFTs are not securities, though specific cases like fractionalized art may be exceptions. The Digital Chamber successfully advocated for NFTs to be excluded from market structure uh, legislation. Maintaining their status as a consumer, not financial products, the SEC does not have statutory authority to regulate consumer products. We're also spearheading the NFT working group for the CFTC GMAC to ensure this distinction remains recognized by the CFTC. OpenSea enters its case well supported by facts, but nonetheless, they still enter the case. Appreciate the Digital Chamber and Perry Ann. And by the way, congratulations to Cody Carbone, who just became the president of the Digital Chamber. Shout out to you, Cody. This is what I've been saying all along in light of the news of the OpenSea NFT marketplace. I've been saying this for a few years. I know it's an older diagram. Forgive me, but is it not telling us that we're viewing the market the proper way? I'm not looking to do I told you so. I'm looking to say, look, the way we're analyzing the market, we catch a lot of crap for. But as far as I'm concerned, for all the hits and misses, we're hitting more than we're missing. And I'll take that for now. And this is evidence of that. I said years ago, this is the SEC crypto war strategy. And here we are. Sue each different type of technology for legal clarity and different business model using crypto assets for legal clarity. This is the deal. Everybody's got to run the gauntlet, the ripple gauntlet that we've already run. Now, this is a recapture of 2008-2009 collapse. I lived through it. A lot of us lived through it. I can't just get some music in here I can't play. But you get the point of the collapse. No one could have seen this coming. I feel like we can see it coming. Now, Finance A Lot says down here, we're about to see the largest face-ripping rally we've seen in the last 14 years until September 20th. They're all selling. This is how it ends. And essentially, I'm going to surmise what Finance A Lot is saying here. And shout out to him. Give him a follow. He puts out great content. The takeaway here is that just like every administration does, they start cutting things and slashing things so that they can get the market moving briefly as you head down the runway to the elections. Cut gas prices, you've been seeing them go down. Rate cuts coming in September from the Fed to stimulate the economy and the housing market, the like, right? This will cause that face-ripping rally. But as soon as we get beyond the election, you're going to see that crash like we saw in 0809 is basically what he's sharing here. And hopefully we all have lived through this. Well, I know I have to make sure that you're prepared and let, by prepared, let's say this. Most people by prepared for a moment like this that's coming would say, make sure you have enough to get through a downtime. And I was raised that way to understand, yeah, in down times, you make sure you save, make sure you put stuff away so you can get through those down times. Now, I was very fortunate to be raised by the parents that I had. I was very lucky. It's like winning the lottery. But I will say this. When it comes to finances, learning how to plan and financial plan, my, my family and my parents were not educated in this department. And I have worked very hard to find the education myself. And I would offer, not only do you in a downturn economy want to have enough money to get through the economy, but if you have the awareness, you want to save enough money that not only can you get through the economy, but you can invest and buy things for your portfolio while it's off 40 or 60 percent while you're going through that downturn. And if you can put yourself in any place 
where you're doing discipline buying, no matter how small, you are beginning to teach yourself to buy during the worst times like the richest people of the world do. That discipline can change you and your entire family's life if you sit down and take the time to learn the markets. Stack your pennies next to their dollars. Find out the elites that you're interested in that always win and just do what they do. Follow them as what they do. Not what they say, but what they do. Things, I'm telling you, can take a real change. Now, financial advice. 126 nations meet to discuss ditching the U.S. dollar, and that could play a big role in this supposed downturn we're talking about. Algeria, at the same time, announces their plans to join BRICS along with the 126 countries there that are considering ditching the dollar. You know they're considering joining BRICS too, correct? Meanwhile, Reserve Bank of India, which is a part of BRICS and has deep ties, direct and indirect, with Ripple, the country's central bank has suggested developing a plug-and-play system for cross-border payments to improve interoperability among countries. And in fact, they're doing so. And the United States may link some of its private banks to India's universal payment interface known as UPI to develop fast payments network, said Federal Reserve Governor Christopher Waller. How about that? That's what we're talking about. And here is the evidence that the Royal Monetary Authority of Bhutan and India are working together, as well as Singapore, and all of them have connections to Ripple. We are now focusing on making the UPI and the Rupee truly global. The deployment of UPI-like infrastructure in foreign jurisdictions, facilitating QR code-based payment acceptance through UPI apps at international merchant locations, and interlinking UPI with fast payment systems in other countries, for cross-border remittances are on top of our agenda. Notable progress in this direction has already been made with countries like Bhutan, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Singapore, the UAE, Mauritius, Namibia, Peru, France, and a few other countries. Many of which have connections directly or indirectly to Ripple and XRP. Hugely exciting to me. And so is this. Australia government directly mentions XRP on how taxes applied on crypto assets transactions using gift cards work. This is real, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to Amalai for pointing this out. The example here is given about a gift card that Olivia, denominated in XRP, paid 500 XRP to acquire the gift card and has an available balance of 500 XRP. At the time, Olivia acquired a gift card. Uh, XRP had a market value of $1. Olivia uses the gift card to buy a guitar costing 400 XRP. At the time Olivia acquires the guitar, the XRP had a market value of 95 cents. Olivia has a capital loss of $20 and a remaining balance of 100 XRP. So that's how that works. But is it real? Yes, it's real. Australian .gov.au site explaining taxation right here, Australian Taxation Office, government. You come down here and lo and behold, there is the example using a gift card denominated in XRP on the state of our country of Australia's government site for taxation. Uh, shout out to Big Skinny. He's going to love this one. Uh, taxes has been the thing that's not so sexy, but he's been absolutely right from day one. And it is that, you know, things aren't going to move forward until taxation is absolutely hammered out in every direction globally. So there can be no um, tax harvesting or tax havens around the world when these assets get treated in a collaborative, cooperative effort in the same similar like fashion. You can close the loopholes where countries can go for tax havens on digital assets if it's treated the same all around the world. Watch Japan and BRICS very closely. Big moves coming, shock and all, says Crypto Tank. And I say, bring it. We're not scared. Bring it. We're ready for it. But I really do believe it's going to come down to what we've always known. Clarity in the United States. The rest of the world is moving along quickly, and we know that because Ripple has largely built those relationships around the world. 
What we need now is the largest economy with the world's reserve currency, the U.S. dollar, to step into this digital realm and give it its final anointing, a coronation, if you will, a blessing, right? By introducing its economy, its citizens, and its government into this new digital world and these new payment rails. And I believe when they do, XRP, XLM, Stellar, Ripple, Paxos, and USDC, and Circle will all be a part or pillars of that U.S. infrastructure and presence in the new digital economy. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. And I'm glad I get to share them with you. And I'm super grateful that I can. And I'm super grateful that you allow me into your daily routine in life. It's not financial advice from me or anyone else. Just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you in the Freedom Zone. And you're going to want to go there with us today, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my. Oh, my. Boy, the plot thickens about this whole, what have I said about the mainstream media has got to be dismantled or held accountable so they stop running a false 24-hour news cycle and narratives? The real liars. Have they been caught? Have we seen them get themselves in a place where now they have to get legit? Well, let's go find out in the Freedom Zone. Come on in. All right, welcome back. I'm super excited.